the Axe Estuary in East Devon, the point at which the River Axe empties into the English Channel. By this stage in the river's course, the water flows slow and heavy with silt, a cargo dumped as expansive mud banks on the estuary's tidal shores. In a natural estuary, this muddy, salty shore would change by degrees from salt marsh to freshwater wetlands and eventually woodland edge. But here in the UK, few estuaries retain this natural character. The Axe Estuary Wetlands is a huge marshal and nature reserve developed by East Devon District Council to help wildlife flourish and give people the chance to explore by recreating pockets of wetland habitat within the man-made landscape of the estuary. Welcome to the Wild Wetlands. Winter here on the wetlands is all about the birds. Ducks flock to the estuary in winter to avoid the bitter northern climate. Many species are found here on the Axe Estuary wetlands. All have special adaptations to allow them to exploit different feeding opportunities. Ducks can be put into neat categories depending on how they feed. Starting with the smallest, teal are handsome little ducks which specialise in feeding on the edge of pools, ditches and scrapes. They are looking for windblown seeds and plant material, nimbly picked from the water surface or just below with their short beak. Shoveler duck are the flamingos of the wild wetlands. Their amazing broad bill has evolved to sift floating food out of the water and both male and female shoveler spend most of their time with this huge appendage either hidden beneath the water or beneath a warm wing. A large and very smart looking duck, pintail are dabblers. They dip their heads deep underwater using their long necks to get at plants submerged out of the reach of smaller species. One of the fastest flying ducks he gets his name from that long tail. Widgeon are medium-sized ducks whose whistling calls fill the air on cold winter days. Pairing for life, the male and female widgeon keep in contact within vast flocks with these piping calls. Widgeon, unlike most other ducks, feed completely out of the water on the surrounding short grass, the pools and scrapes providing a safe haven to escape to if scared. The rich estuary mud is full of life, food for other visiting birds, birds with yet more fabulous adaptations for feeding. Shell duck flick their bills through the surface of the mud, skimming out tiny mollusks and shrimps. Common sandpiper use long, thin beaks, like tweezers, to pick tiny morsels from the mud surface. Curlew use their long, slender beaks to probe deep within the mud for lugworms. The curve of the bill fitting neatly to the curve of a worm burrow. Just how much food is contained within the mud can be appreciated by watching a wader like this black-tailed godwit. Each time it raises its head to swallow, it has found a tasty treat. The fewer times it probes between swallowing, the more fruitful the feeding. A female kestrel cuts a lonely figure above the winter landscape. The cold weather means this kestrel needs all the hunting available here to herself, as a kestrel's hunting method is an exhausting process. The more time she can spend quietly perched, the better. Hovering like this requires an enormous effort. Wings beat constantly to counteract the pull of gravity, while that broad tail continually adjusts against buffeting winds to keep her still. Her head is fixed, motionless. She's searching far below for vole runs through the rough grass. Given away by the vole's almost perpetual urination, a territorial marker between voles, these tracks are visible to the kestrel's ultraviolet vision. When a vole is spotted, the kestrel will descend in stages, 
careful not to alert the small mammal to its presence. Eyes transfixed on her quarry, the vole has no inkling of the threat overhead. As the kestrel slips lower, she maintains her focus on the speedy vole. Wings twist on her final approach. But, despite that glowing urine, voles often escape. Aside from feeding, the next most pressing activity for birds is to keep their plumage in pristine condition. This is especially important in the depths of winter. Spending their lives swimming in brown estuary water and walking over thick, sticky mud, it's a wonder how mute swans like this remain ghostly white. Hours of the day are committed to preening, grooming individual feathers and coating them with a rich waterproofing oil secreted from a gland on the top of the bird's tail. This mute swan picks up the oil on the bottom of her beak and uses that long, flexible neck to ensure every single one of her 25,000 feathers is treated with this life-preserving fluid. Once satisfied, she's free to get on with the rest of her day. Winter is all about survival. Feeding, preening precious insulating feathers and generally conserving energy by doing as little as possible. Life, however, really kicks off in the spring. Arguably the poster child of the Accessory Wetlands, little egrets have gradually reappeared as a breeding bird in Devon over the last 30 years. After spending the winter fiercely defending their solitude, little egrets group together in spring to breed in large colonies. With their dandy crest and chest quills indicating full breeding plumage, this is the one time of the year when an egret will tolerate another in its personal space. Egrets are master fishermen, wading through the shallow water, watching for fish to reveal themselves by moving. Whilst wading, egrets will shake their bright yellow feet under the water to spook fish and allow the bird its sighter. Forward-facing eyes give them excellent depth perception to judge the distance of the strike, before that needle-sharp beak stabs like a harpoon to snaffle a meal, in this case, a small eel. 